Okay guys, I'm going to try to make this uh, video kind of quick. I'm going to start off by saying, number one, when this video is over, you get off your behind and you go to the store and you load up what you can, get whatever you need. If you have been prepping up for a while like me, you just top off whatever you need to. And if you've been procrastinating, then you get up off your ass and you go and you make up for all that lost time that you didn't do anything. Because time is running out. <clears throat> I think it's already obvious that this is going to get out of control. It's not the mortality rate that concerns me. It's shortages. Okay? Now, I want to just go over a couple things real quick. Number one, <clears throat> I did a video about this uh, respiratory virus kit I put together. It was originally meant for H5N1. I've always said that a pandemic was the second thing I thought was going to happen, more like, most likely to happen. So, this guy, again, thought H5N1 would be it. Put it together using a, off of a study from 2003 about using colloidal silver and a specific one. Don't just run out and get, in, get anything. Watch the video and I break down the study, which one and why. And I'm not producer of this. I got affiliate links to all this stuff. You can find it. That's the extent of it. I've showed you how many I bought myself because I believe in it and I'm recommending it because I already got it for myself so anyway and a nebulizer to put it in your lungs in the study it killed 90% of uh, SARS which is a type of coronavirus 90% of that wiped out in an hour they recommended putting in a nebulizer and they said it'd be more effective in, if taken in early stages now nothing's been done with that research I'm doing something with it myself I'm going to leave a link to that in the description bar <clears throat> if you're interested in that and at the end of this video. So, you want to check it out? That's something to look into. Order it if you want to and then go to the store and load up. It'll be on your it's way soon enough. Okay, so this thing is going to spread. I think there's no question about it, right? Uh, whistleblower, at, I don't know if it's true or not, but let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just listen and hear it out. But... <clears throat> A whistleblower at the Department of Health and Human Services is seeking federal protection after claiming that a dozen, more than a dozen workers who received the first Americans evacuated from Wuhan lacked proper training or protective gear from coronavirus infection. They might have got infected, went around spreading it. That could have happened. <clears throat> U.S. Centers, or CDC said Friday that officials are aware of a second possible instance of community spread of COVID-9 in California, right? I think it's actually up to three now, last I checked. In Oregon, uh, health authorities said the third case not linked to travel to part of the world known, with known cases of COVID-19 um, is considered a case of community transmission. So somebody caught that out in their community, right? And I'm in Austin, in San Antonio, a couple hours away, a lady was tested negative, then comes 12 days later, I believe, got tested again, she's positive. Now the thing is, she may have infected a dozen people or more. They're trying to find them, track them down, and test them. Now, did those people infect anybody? We don't know, but it's already out there. I think we can agree on that. Not that the mortality rate is that high, but shortages are going to be the issue. And medical services being overwhelmed. So if you have other medical conditions, well, that, that's going to be bad too, because they're going to have their hands full. <clears throat> and the FDA reports first shortages of medication with ingredients sourced from China. So that's bad. You need prescription meds, you need to go stock up and get what you can, right? Have the doctor get you, you know, talk to your doctor, maybe he can do something for you. But get what you can, because there may be shortages there too. Now, <clears throat> what are the guys in charge doing? Okay, let's go over some of these things that they're doing here. Uh, U.S. Surgeon General Adams said that wearing face masks could actually increase a person's risk of contracting COVID-19. Echoing remarks he made Saturday that called for people to stop buying masks. So they know this thing is here. And they don't want you to buy masks. They know it's airborne. It's probably aerosol. And they don't want you to buy masks. 
Uh, that's great. Uh, Representative Houlihan asked Dr. Redfield, director uh, at the CDC, and there was a couple questioning, but the main ones, <clears throat> she asked if Americans should wash their hands regularly and cough into their shoulders. His answer was yes. She asked if they should stock up on cleaning supplies. His answer was no. When asked about stocking up on prescription meds, he said, not at this time. When asked about stocking up food, he said, not at this time. When asked about wearing masks, he said, no. So they know this thing is here. They know it's going to spread. And they're telling you not to stock up on food, not to wear masks, not to buy a cleaning solution. You know, you don't want to, I don't know, maybe uh, wipe down uh, the counters and doors and stuff like that to be a little safer. I don't know. But that's what they got. So for those of you who haven't seen the movie Contagion, you got to check it out. It's all right, movie. And for those of you who have seen it, here's a little reminder. This is what's going on right now. When the word goes out, there will be a run on the banks, gas stations, grocery stores, you name it. It will panic. The virus will be the least of our worries. It will tip over now. We just need to make sure that nobody knows until everybody knows. Okay, so that's basically what's going on here. And when everybody knows, the shelves are wiped out in minutes. It'll be maybe the people already in the store that check out their Facebook and see it, and they load up. In the meantime, you're still at work. You're getting in your car, and you're trying to fight the traffic to get to the store. It's already being totally ransacked. There's some crazy people out there, man. They'll probably take the tile off the floor. I mean, the, the virus itself, I don't care about. The mortality rate, you know, I don't think it's that bad. But shortages and panicking people, you know, look what they did with the election. Right? A lot of people got mad Hillary didn't win. What do they do? They burn down buildings and flip. A lot of people got mad Hillary didn't win. What do they do? They burn down buildings and flip down cars. That was over an election. Imagine when they're hungry, thirsty. They got kids to feed. They need medications for their, them and their kiddos. That is why I say stock up and hunker down. They might have a medical martial law. In China, they lock people inside their homes. Now, I don't see them doing that here, but they could have martial law, right? In that kind of severe situation to keep from spreading. I mean, even if it was only 1% of the population, which I think it'd be a little more, but it really needed critical care, that would overwhelm hospitals and clinics. They're already almost at full capacity. You know, you go to the, one of these little clinics or something. I remember last time I spring, I'm like, man, I went there forever, man. Or you go to take a piss test for a job. You know, last time, um, that's been, geez, such a long time, but 18 years? I can't imagine. It's just got worse. I've been in the same place forever, but just take a piss test? That took forever. Imagine when people were dying. So, go to the store, top off what you have if you already got stuff at home. If you don't, you got to make up for lost time. Get a big old box, couple boxes, write books old clothes on them, go to the store, load them up, and bring them like that so the neighbors don't see what you have. Because if they get hungry, they're going to come for what? For food that they see that you bring in here. You got baskets and, and bags and bags of, of groceries, and they like to eat fresh and just buy what they're going to eat that day. They don't like eating leftover type. Well, when they have nothing in that fridge after a whole day, they're going to come knocking on your door. And you turn them away, they may come back with more people. It's best just to not to avoid that whole situation. The best way to win a fight is just not to be in it. Now, there's some Rambos out there just talking about how they're going to shoot somebody at their door. And then they're going to get hauled off to jail. And, you know, leave their family and all this stuff just to get ransacked, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, you know, a lot of keyboard commandos. But really, the best thing to do is just avoid that whole damn situation. Get stuff. Put it in boxes. Books, uh, put uh, VHS or some crap on, you know, and just go to the store, load up, pack them up, bring them home, drop it off in the kitchen, take the, bo the boxes back, load them up again. Get what you can because when the word goes out, when it's on TV and an official actually says, okay, we need you to go to the store 
and load up. We're going to have to stay home for a couple weeks. People are going to panic and wipe stuff out. Get it while you can. Toilet paper is just, is, is, you can't find it in Hong Kong. Right? That could be something great to stock up. I've always had a ton put aside. My wife never understood it. Now she understands. And now she's surprised at how much I was able to call a lot of this weeks ago when I first heard about it. You know, get what you can. Get what you know you're going to need before everybody else does. It's the old, you know, story on the cricket and grasshopper. Are you going to be the ant or are you going to be the grasshopper? All right, now it's time for you to go to the store, either top off what you have or load up like you never have before because it may take, they say a couple weeks, I'd say like two months. If you can go non-symptomatic for like 27 days, if you did two weeks and let some people, okay, go back to work, somebody's infected, they might have infected somebody else, you got to go to another two weeks and you wipe out your food supply, then what? Shoot for two months. If you can't do that, at least a month. But shoot for at least two months. I'm set for way more than that, so I'm not worried about it. But, again, try to get at least two months if you can. All right, guys. Get off your ass. Get what you can. Get what you need. Meds for your kiddos. Med for you. Food, bottled water, all the cleaning stuff. Check out my video I did on shortages. And uh, that'll help you out. Make a list and get going. All right, guys, that's it. Move your behind, go. Not that big of a deal until you wait, until you have nothing and you need it. Then it's a big deal. All right. Make a list. Go. I'm out, guys.